Good morning. What we are going to be looking at today is how to not just take the photograph, because we've done that in the last few sessions, but we're going to be looking very much at how we can improve the photograph after it's been taken. So what I'm talking about is post editing. OK, post editing. Now, one of my favorite pieces of software for this is Adobe Lightroom. I don't buy it as the complete product. I uh, rent it, if you like, around about $9 a month from memory. And it gives me access to the whole of the Adobe suite or virtually all of it. But it's Lightroom that I prefer. It's relatively straightforward and simple to use once you've become familiar with it. And I'm, I don't use Photoshop. It's purely a Lightroom and it will take a good photograph and make it absolutely amazing. And it will take a photograph that you might not think is sufficient quality to keep and you consider deleting it. Well, it's amazing how you can approve it in what's called post development. And this is what we're going to be looking at right now. So if this is a new experience to you, I think you'll enjoy it. <laughs> I certainly hope you will. And uh, if it is a first experience, do let me know. Make a comment. Let me know and let me know what you what you think of it. It's not intended to be teaching you how to use Lightroom, but you'll pick up very quickly what my what I call my workflow, how I take the photograph, I look at it and think, right, what needs to be done? to improve it and I work through a list and whatever photograph I take I work to the same list so sit back watch and hopefully you're going to enjoy it bye for now this photograph that you're looking at on the screen now we're in Lightroom by the way and if you come up to the top here where my little mouse is going round in circles you'll see that this was taken at 1 60th of a second at f4.5 and the ISO was 3200. It was on a wide angle lens 28 millimeter. Now this was handheld and we were going in here to have a meal. This by the way is in Yokohama, Japan and it was taken um, in January. Let me just get the date up if I can. No, I can't. Uh, yes, I can. There we are. 19th of January, 2020 at 10.15. Uh, that is UK time. It's not Japanese time. OK, so let's get rid of that information for the moment. It was handheld. It was just one of those moments I thought, let's take a photograph. And it's not one that I would put in my album by any means, because look, there is a sign here and it's totally burned out, too much light. Now the exposure that I was using, I was using the evaluative reading. So it was looking at everything that you can see in that frame and it was taking an average and it didn't work out. It, it's not a good exposure. So let's just see what we can do about it. On the right hand side of the screen, this is where we have sliders where we can make adjustments for so many things. Now, the first thing that I'm going to look at, uh, let me just find it for you. First thing I'm going to look at is tick both of these boxes, which is all about aberrations and corrections. You need to Google that to find out a bit about it, but it, it compensates for the lens that's on your camera. So I've now put in that it's a Canon lens and that's fine. It just makes a tiny, tiny reduction. Now I'm coming up to the top of the screen here and the highlights. So let me just show you if I slide to the right, it makes everything lighter. If I come to the left, it makes everything darker. Now, look at the top middle. You can see the signage. When I turn the brightness down, you can see it. But I need there to be, I need there to be uh, some 
light in this so I'm only turning it down fractionally to there okay now the next one down is shadows and you see I can make it go very much darker or I can lighten the shadows so I'm wanting it somewhere pretty much midway and that's minus nine now here are the whites now to get this as accurate as I can I'm holding down the option key I'm on a Mac at the moment and you can see all the whites coming in I want to turn it down just so they disappear and that for me now is a good setting for the whites and I'm doing exactly the same with the blacks hold down the option key you can see the marks on there can't you I want to get rid of everything there on the screen and my blacks should be as good as anything well that's turned up very very high indeed all right now that is where we are going to start let's now come down to texture I'm just going to put a bit of texture I'll turn it all the way up and can you see any difference in there just look at the railings for instance at the front on the right that is with texture all the way up turn it down it's not as clear so I just want a, a little bit of texture in there so I'm on plus 30 now the clarity is doing something very similar there it's all turned up and that doesn't look bad does it if I turn it right the way down it's no good at all so I want a little bit of clarity in it so I'm going to take that to let's say plus 40 well plus 41 and I'm going to put a bit of vibrance this just lifts the color a fraction plus 20 all right now that's where we start so let's now go down these are all the different colors that we can adjust and this is a beautiful thing when you're taking photographs in RAW as opposed to JPEG you have got tremendous adjustments where you can compensate for so much so I'm going to come back to that near the end uh, I can sharpen the photograph but I don't want to sharpen the entire image I'm holding down the option key and I'm on masking and I'm just turning this up now that shows us all the main lines and that's about the level I'm looking for and now I take the sharpening up to 150 the maximum but it's only doing 65% if you like uh, of the photograph where the lines are I want the lines to be sharp but the rest of the detail I'm not too worried about okay now let's have some fun this is what I've called painting with light so the first thing I'm going to do is choose uh, a preset that I have which is called Sun Glow and instead of going individually all over the place I can set my parameters here it's easiest to show you rather than try and explain but watch what happens when I lift this up can you see how that is lightning let me turn let me just turn that up a fraction just give it a little bit more give it a bit more density a bit more flow and turn that up to say there right now watch what happens when I do it this time can you see that straight away on the pavement makes it look as if it's daylight now we don't want that I don't want it to look as if it's daylight and you can move by moving the mouse I can make this go anywhere that I want right so I'm going to cancel that it's just to show you uh, what it was all about and I just want to turn that setting down a wee bit um, so I'm going to bring that back down to 47 let's say and I'm coming in from the right hand side and can you see how this is making everything brighter up to let's say that point there and I can continue to adjust that if that's too bright as it is I'm just going to knock that down fractionally but it's done the whole of this area on the right hand side of the photograph and if I wanted to bring in whites blacks texture whatever I can but I'm quite happy with that I think for the moment let me just bring it down a 
shade more. There we are. I don't want this area to be too bright. And I'm going to, I'm pressing new. So that's made that, that little gray mark is telling me, and here it's telling me we've made adjustments in that area. And now I'm coming over to the right hand side and I'm doing the same. No, I'm not, am I? Now I'm going to be doing the same over here, up to there. Now you'll notice the pavement has got that little bit lighter. Let me just increase the exposure a fraction. That's too much. Okay, and I'm happy with that, so I'm clicking done. So that's that part. Now what we're going to do is paint with the brush. Now can you see my little mouse has turned into a circle, a round dot with a circle? I want to make that bigger. Imagine that is my paintbrush and you can see it on the right hand side getting bigger as I'm adjusting the size of it. So that's the size I want to use from a paintbrush. And what I want to do is just make this lighter, this area here where the railings are. So I am literally painting on here and back and back. We've got to decide when it's light enough. Okay, now I'm quite happy with that and I'm going to do the same the other side over here. Just going to make that a little bit lighter. Okay, and I'm going to take it onto this sign here where McDonald's signpost is. And I'm going to click OK there for the moment. Now, it mightn't look as if we've done a lot, but let me show you. The left hand side is what it was before I did anything. The right hand side are the changes that have been made. I hope you are impressed with that already, but we're nowhere near finished. So let's carry on with the same brush because that's quite nice. Um, it's a nice size. And I'm, I'm up at the top right hand side of the photo. So this is a dining room, I guess, for the restaurant up here. So I'm just going to go in and brighten that room up a little bit so we can see a bit more in there. OK, and the same with the sign outside. And I'm going to make the brush slightly smaller for this. And I'm going in here to this room and brightening this one up as well. OK. Let's just make this a little bit brighter, bolder. So we just go in and paint. Now we've got these flowers outside. So why don't we do the same here? So let me just print new and off we go here. So not, I don't want it too bright, but just bright enough. That's too much. So I'm taking that one away. Undo add brush stroke and it takes that one off. So I'm just going to make this a little less dense and paint on there. Paint on there. Paint there. OK. Now we've got all this area down here of the pavement, which is far too light. Where the door is, you'd have more light on that area of the pavement, most certainly, but this should be quite dark. So what we do, uh, I'm coming up to the brush again, but I'm changing the brush this time. So I'm going for a darker colour, uh, and that's what we call burning. And I'm going to use this tool, and I'm coming up, and I want it sideways like that, more or less at that angle. And I want that to become darker, so I decrease the exposure in that area. OK, virtually turn that right down. Now, if I turn the black down as well, see how we're getting darker? And that I'm quite happy with. So we've got that as a darkened area. Um, 
this signpost, we can do something with that. And I don't like this in the picture, actually. So I'm going to, I'm going to just change this slightly and crop it. So I'm cropping that out. And now that is our photograph, but we want the sign, that road sign, just to be a little bit brighter, a little bit easier to see. So I'm coming back to light um, a sun glow and I just start painting and watch the sign okay it's just lifted it slightly now this sign up here let's zoom in onto that that is very bright indeed so let's see if we can get that to go any darker. So I come back up and choose uh, something that will darken it. So let's go burn. Now this might be just a bit too powerful to start off with. I don't know. No, I think I'm going to get away with this. So I'm just painting over this area. Let's just zoom out for a moment and see. So the sign can now be clearly seen. What about this here? So we've got green as a prominent color. So on the right hand side, I'm coming down to green and I'm looking at the luminance. Now watch if I go all the way down or go all the way up. So I'm just going to darken that green a fraction. So that's minus 40. OK, are you enjoying this? <laughs> now we've got the yellow there as well. So let's see what happens if we change the yellow. Now that's having quite an effect on the entire picture. Because there's a lot of yellow in the lights inside and I don't want to spoil that. But I've taken that down to minus 12. Let's look at the entire picture. So the yellow and the green are standing out. Uh, we've also got these lights and we could do something with them. So you can, you can spend hours doing this, just making it better and better and better. Let me just take you back before I do anything else to show you what it was originally. There's our original on the left and where we're up to now on the right. So let me bring it back. Can you see the difference? Really does show, doesn't it? Really does show. So uh, I'm going to keep playing with it just for a couple more minutes. Um, I want to come light again. So I'm, I, I like to use sunshine, even though <laughs> it's the night I'm using sunshine. I want to reduce the size of that brush. And I'm coming in here. No, you know, I'm not going to use the sunshine. I'm going to use uh, a street light. I'm going to use, where is it? Sky, blue skies, light, sunlight, sun glow, street light. I'm going to use that and press it on there. And just let's see what the difference that's made. I'll click done. Can you see how that's made it very much brighter inside there? I'll do it again. I'm going to go right next to it. Click it again. Click done. And that's given us a lot more light inside there. And I could do the same all the way along here. OK, so they're pretty well lit. Now, what about these little lights here on the front? Let's give them a lift as well. So coming back, uh, I'm going to make these really bright. That should be an interesting one. So I'll just put it straight onto the lamp. 
and let's see what that looks like. Can you see how much brighter that's gone? But well, I hope you can. You'll see it in a moment, I promise you. Let's make it bigger and I'm going to click again straight in the middle of that lamp. Click done. That really is much brighter. And we can come over here and I'll, I would do it to all of them. Okay, so I just go in there. One, two, three, and click done. Let's come back to the normal size. So now you've got those lights that are really featured. Do you get the idea of what we're doing? Let's come back up to a different brush. And then I will I will stop this one shortly because um, there's more I want to do with you. So increasing the size of the brush, and I'm now working over here. This is quite dark. So let's just paint it. Now can you see how that pillar has just suddenly really come into its own? And what about this McDonald's? Let's give that a bit of a lightener. Okay, maybe that was too much. I'm going to undo that one. And turn the size down fractionally. And let's have a look here. Just brightening this very, very gently. Okay, final thing I want to do is to the ground. And I'm going to darken the ground where that person is walking. So we will come to, uh, let's have a look what's going to be a good one. Darker on shadows. That sounds interesting. So let's just come here. Now, can you see that's too much? Well, actually, it may not be. Let's feather that in. No, I don't think that is too much because now we've got the light coming out and it shows like the light's coming this way. Uh, let me bring the flow of that down fractionally and see what happens if I now. Right, so now it's going slightly darker. So I'm sort of feathering it in to what was there and let's give it a little bit of darkness here. Well, this is lighter than what was there. No, it's not. It is covering it. Yeah. Do you get the idea? So let me click done on that. And now uh, let's have a look at the before and after. So there's the before and the after. Do you get the idea? And if you wanted to, I mean, just look at the top left hand side of this, the road sign, the difference. The sign above the um, restaurant entrance here, just watch the difference when I come back to where we are. Mega, isn't it? Well, at least I think it is. <laughs> um, and how we've <coughs> made it much lighter up here in the restaurant areas. But just look at this, all so dark. That's where we started. And now, bang. So that now, for me, would be an acceptable photograph. And I would include that in, uh, if I've got an album or whatever for my holiday photo, that for me would make a nice photograph. So now we will move on and do something just a little bit different. Hope you enjoyed it. So we are in Yokohama. It's the same day, I believe, the 19th of January. Uh, I don't know why it's refusing to bring the date up. There we go, yeah, 19th of January. And this is one eight hundredth of a second at F8 ISO 400. And a 35 millimeter lens. So it's going towards wide angle. Um, and I was using a zoom lens here, 20 to 35. So that was the widest it would go. And you know, it's not a bad photograph, is it? It's not bad, but wow, we can really improve it. 
look at the flowers. They're pretty, um, they're flat. There's not much bounce in those colors. Same with the wall, the buildings in the background. So let's just see what we can do to make improvements. So the first thing is I'm coming down and putting the details of my camera back in, that it's a Canon. And could you see how that just slightly moved? That's the aberration settings, as they call it, the corrections. Um, I'll sharpen it now before we do any work on it. And that looks a good level to go. Turn that up to 150. I'll take the details off. Right, so now let's start doing some work on this. Uh, so highlights. Now look, if I turn it right down, turn it right up. So we want it where it's just pleasant. And I'm going there, minus 24. These are the shadows I'm playing with. I'm going to leave those turned up, plus 11. The whites, I press the option key, and I just want to make sure there's no white showing through. That's good for my whites, minus 1. I'm doing the same with the black, so there, that's what I want to get rid of. I'm just bringing the slider up fractionally. Okay, so that is where we are starting out. Okay, so texture. Let's just see what the difference is. If I turn that up fully, nice effect, but it's too much. So I'm just going to leave that set on 10. Clarity, I'm going to leave on 15. And put a bit of vibrance into those colors leave that on 25 okay and you just play around you know I don't know they're the correct figures I'm playing around with what looks pleasant to my eye so now we're going to start working on this area the top of the picture and we're going to get it uh, looking as if it's a sunny day more sun than all this this actual day these photographs were taken it was snowing first thing in the morning can you believe that it really was so i'm going back to one of my favorites that i mentioned to you sun glow and i'm going to pull this down from the top now you can see it's made a bit of a change to the sky there it's made the sky brighter but if i wanted to uh, bring in a little bit of blue just to compensate I can take the blue right out or look at that I could put loads in but I only want a fraction just a hint which is there okay uh, I am quite content with that what about the temperature do we need it that much I think I'm happy with that. The exposure, happy with that. Talk amongst yourselves, David. I will, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm leaving that set at the top as it is. But now what I'm going to do is paint in using the brush and bring these flowers to life, okay? So we'll just make that a fraction bigger difficult to see the size here gonna make it a fraction but that's too big okay and I'm going to turn the flow up a little bit here we go so now just watch the colors come to life as I put sunshine on them and this is all I'm doing is I'm putting sunshine onto the flowers can you see this Again here. Now this isn't difficult, is it? Really isn't. You might say, well, it's time consuming, but if it enhances the photograph, fantastic. Oh, just putting that colour in. Now I've gone too far there. See? So I'm going to edit, I'm going to undo all of that that I've just done and start this part again. Do you know, I've gone too blimmin far there as well. Right, so what I do is turn down the flow. That's like the amount of paint that's on the brush. Okay. 
come around and over there and over on the far side of the lake and let's give it some over on the right hand side over here just to lift those colors a wee bit okay so I'm going to turn my flow back up again just fractionally and I'm going to do something with this building let's make that a little bit lighter making it look as if there's just a wee bit more sunshine on it to lighten it up okay and the same here just lightening it fractionally over here and the whole of this tree okay now, now we could do something with this statue as well I'm sorry about my dog barking in the background but uh, can't be helped someone's come to the door so I'm just where this is partly in shadow it's now lifting it you get the idea and I can click down to that part now do we want this bit of pavement in the bottom of the photograph let's just crop that out slightly it means we lose a building on the left which I am not too bothered about okay I'm happy with that and we could lighten up this part here if we wanted to so press the brush again and just give it a gentle lightening up just so it's not so much in the shadow gives a little bit of detail to it okay what do you think uh, let's have a close-up look now you can see how the shutter speed has frozen the rain that's pretty good the rain that the water that's pretty good now what was it like before compared to after let's have a look so here we are nicely lit up very bright as if it's a lovely sunny day here is how it was looks quite drab before and after before and after get the idea we'll do one more and then I think I've probably illustrated it quite well for you okay Yokohama Chinatown absolutely packed out but this would have been a good photograph if it was exposed correctly and it's not it's just too jolly dark so what can we do first thing is let's go down to the aberration corrections for the lens which is Canon and now I'm go going through this one much quicker with you because uh, you've seen this done I'm looking at the highlights that's way too dark and that's way too light in the middle totally burned out so I want it somewhere around about there shadows so I'm quite happy with the shadows round about there for the moment the whites want those to be taken out that's good and the blacks they are I'm just holding down the old option key on my Mac so that's my starting point any texture let's put some texture in so I'm only going to put in 23 the clarity let's bring that up a little bit that's to up make it the same well 24 give it a bit more vibrance right the photograph is now starting to take shape so let's work with the sunshine coming in and just bringing this side up a little bit am i happy with that am i happy with that yeah i am it's looking very good so I'm just going to drop the exposure a fraction there and 
click OK. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side here and bring this in up to that level there. And let's just see the exposure on that. So that looks OK. And I click Done for that. Now I'm going to do the same from the bottom. All right, so I'm coming up from the bottom. Do you know, I'm not convinced I like that. It's too much. So let's just drop the exposure marginally there. Okay, now I've got a photograph that's ready to be worked on. <laughs> and let's see what we can do. So I'm going to start on this left hand side here. You can see when I come close in, it's a nice red, but let's really make that red pop. All right. So I'm coming down here to the slider for red luminance. Watch what happens to that red. I can make it really dull or make it really pop out. Now, don't just focus on here, but look all the way down. Everything that was red, the red is popping. Are you with me? So happy with that. I'm also going to uh, lift the orange. Now again, look, look all the way down the street. I've turned it right the way down. I'm now coming back up and putting orange into the picture. Uh, and I'm on about 17, 16, 17. Happy with that. Now I'm going to do the same with the yellow. And look at that. Well, look at this guy's scarf or, or the inside of his hood. And look at the yellow on the signs and everywhere you can see as I move that yellow up. The yellow is now really popping. What about the green? We've got green here. We've got green on these little roof canopies. So let's just tune them up marginally. Is anything happening? You know, it's not really, is it? It's not. So we'll do those separately. Turn them down. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave them virtually where they were. Right, now we come up to the brush. And I think I'm still on Light's Sun Glow. Going to make the brush just that little bit bigger so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to turn the density of it up, which means it's going to show more. And let's just see what happens if I bring it onto here, the sunlight. Is that making it any better? Let's have a look. There it was originally on the left. That's what we've just done on the right. OK, can you see the difference between the two sides of the screen? Just look at that. Now let's come and look at this guy here. I'm just clicking once or twice on his face and lightening him up. Just very, very gently. Same with this guy. Just bring in a bit of light into him. Same with him. Same with him. And these. Okay. Let's click down on that and let's have a look again at where we've come from and where we are now. Can you see the difference between the left and the right hand side? Would you say that's improved or not? To me that is quite a pleasant photograph now. It certainly shows uh, where we've been on the holiday that you know that it really is a Chinatown. I'm going to crop it slightly, just ever so slightly because this left hand side to me isn't doing a great deal for me. So crop that. Let's have a look again. That's where we were. Where we are now. 
I'm just wondering if there's anything more I can do with the left hand side with all that red. Uh, I'm thinking of maybe just darkening it fractionally. Uh, let's just see. Bring that down a bit. I'm not sure. No, about like that. But undoing it. That's a beautiful thing. You can undo as well as do. <laughs> uh, so let me just come back. I'm going to. I'm going to brighten rather than. Okay, so you can see I've just lit the sign up. Let's give it another one. Just bringing a bit more vibrancy into this area. That's quite dark there, isn't it? So let's just give that a lift as well. Give this a lift. There you go. What do you think? So, if we now just have another quick look, that's where we were. Old and new. Old and new. What about the overall exposure? I reckon that's about it. I reckon that's about it. So, I hope that has been of interest to you. Um, you can just make a tremendous difference from the photograph by using post-editing, Lightroom, and hope that's whet your appetite to have a go at it. Uh, oh, one more thing. Let's just, before we finish, let's go on to these little canopies outside make them a fraction lighter make them just pop a little bit okay that's it that's me done with the picture okay that's it okay hope you've enjoyed it leave your comments uh, below and let me know how you get on with it okay all the best bye